Good morning, gamers. This is me, Waddles. So, I got you. Every single one of you. I knew you fell for it. I knew you would, too. That's why I did it. Right at the end of the last episode, I said I was going to put a window right here. You seriously believe that I would put a window right here? Like, looking at that? Like, like really? Like, at that? Come on. Welcome back to episode 148. <laughs> I got you. I can't believe it actually worked. I got you. Did you really think this was going to be a window? No. Of course not. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. Welcome back to the episode. Welcome to Full Warm. 2.0. Yep, that's right. Today we'll be building an automatic sheep farm that we won't be finishing. Okay, okay, take it easy. So, two sheep. I need two sheep and only... No, no, no. Take two. Two sheep and two sheep only. One, two. That's two sheep. Enough. Everybody, everybody, enough. Stop it. Two sheep. You come with me. Stay here. So, like four episodes ago, no, I said I was done with the jungle. Completely done. Never going back. That's changed. I do have a different plan, but the law is the law. Even if I do go back over there and finish the unfinished projects like Full Warm and the Panda Resort, even if they were fully complete, they're still entirely off limits. We need a new sheep farm. In today's episode, we're going to build 16 automatic sheep farms, an item collection system, and do the entire interior of the build that we started last episode. Leave a like and consider subscribing if you're new here. You won't regret it. New video every new day. A little bit of catch up. Right at the end of the last episode, we built this building. It's brand new. It's gigantic. One of the biggest builds in this entire world. It is Full Warm 2.0. Inside of this building, we're going to fit 16 sheep farms. We're going to put four over here and then four on top. And then on the other side, four over there and four on top. I think it'll fit. If it doesn't, we have room in the middle to crunch them together. It's a tall building. It's a very, very tall building. In the last episode, I didn't say what I was doing with this building. Today, I am. Right off the bat, I'm thinking we raise the ground in the back of this building. So the sheep farms that we're going to be building are going to be three blocks wide and i think four blocks deep so we could back them right up to the back wall that's fine one two three four and then i think what we do is like staircases to step everything up i think it's gonna look great if you can remember back a couple months ago when we were living in the jungle right before we left we started setting up a sheep farm project i never ended up finishing that project because 1.17 dropped way sooner than i thought it was going to by popular demand i've decided that we will be going back to the jungle and finishing up the sheep farm and the panda resort but this sheep farm is better. It'll be finished right from the start. So real quick, I'm going to grab all of the materials for this build and put them inside of this chest. There's really not that many. Seven building blocks, one observer, one redstone dust, one dispenser, which is exactly where the skeleton farm comes in. A couple episodes ago, we built the skeleton farm. You see, it's all coming together because inside of this skeleton farm, bows, so many bows. I saved all these bows and thankfully we can use broken bows in the dispenser recipe. The big reveal, I've been planning this project for a little while now. But bows are the problem. You see, we don't have a spider farm over here, which means no string. We can get wood easily, but no string. Until skeleton spawner farm, we get the bows crafted for us. We don't need to worry about the wood. We don't need to even worry about the string because it's free bows. The biggest components of this farm by far are the observer and the dispenser. They work together perfectly with shears inside of the dispenser to shear the sheep over and over and over again which means shears you will also need a pair of shears for this farm but you're probably going to need more than one pair of shears which is exactly why we got iron last episode but we're not building one tile of this farm to be honest i don't recommend building one tile i recommend building more tiles we'll be building 16 tiles for this farm that means one tile for every single sheep color right now that means we're going to need way more supplies like 16 dispensers 16 redstone dust 16 observers and a ton of building blocks by the way at least six of your building blocks on this design should be glass. Okay, so I think that's that. That's all of the supplies that you need for this farm. Not for the item collection system, we'll talk about that later, but for the farm, that's what you need. Make baby. Thank you. Oh yeah, I changed the build a little bit since last episode too. I put these deep slate walls in, think it looks pretty cool. So the tiles of this farm. What I'm thinking is uh, we start the tile one block off of the wall, we line them right up to the back wall, so I I think that means that's gonna go there uh yeah that's gonna go there and then we do four right there four on top four over there four on top we save a little bit of space in between for an item collection system we have an item collection system down low and then all of the items get dropped off in the middle now today right now we're just gonna put them inside of a chest eventually once i have like an iron farm or something imagine it automatic wool sorter right down back there in the field it would be perfect we run hoppers down the mountain it's amazing it's amazing it's amazing but i'm getting ahead of myself automatic sheep farm we built so many of these at this point so we're gonna start with a grass block the grass block is where the sheep stands facing the grass block 
we're gonna need an observer the observer is going to detect when the block changes and the dispenser with the redstone dust right behind it is going to actually shear the sheep all that we need is a pair of shears inside of the dispenser and blocks actually around this farm to keep the sheep inside of this block now i highly recommend putting more grass blocks around the farm uh not just right there the more grass blocks you have around this thing and the more light that you have around this thing the faster the grass regrows which is good thing good thing for sure so there's tile number one now uh, all that i need to do is tile number two which can sit there tile number three which can sit there and tile number four which can sit right there we can use the walls in the middle to kind of like connect everything so that wall gets reused and then we start over here do the same thing and then finally the same thing right there and then i do it again over there and i do it again up top so let's talk about this farm a little bit this building i didn't really plan things out i i don't know if this is gonna actually all fit inside of this build like i want to like i want it to i don't know um i think it should it's a pretty tall build i mean there's a lot of room but if it doesn't i do have a backup plan we're definitely going to want to leave a way in and out of the back of this farm like over here so i can get shears inside of the dispensers i'm not going to worry about it quite yet that's going to be like the last thing that we do today but yeah there we go that's one tile automatic sheep farms are amazing honestly one of my favorite automatic farms in the entire game you set this thing up and then you literally have free blocks it's just generated for you while you're around at your base this location i think is a good spot you definitely want to build this automatic sheep farm in a location that's going to be loaded in which is exactly why i put it right behind grim i'm not too sure where we're going to take the base and where we're actually going to keep building buildings i was thinking around the lake but at the same time i was kind of considering expanding things back into the taiga that's behind us either way though with this location it should be loaded in pretty much always which is a good thing if this farm isn't loaded in it's not going to run if it doesn't run you don't get free wool for builds and you don't get free wool for beds for looking for netherite anyways i ran out of sand i knew i was going to run out of sand at some point in this episode i didn't think it would be so soon the plan is to go back over here to this lake right here this great giant lake that i never see and dig up sand i know it's definitely not me but i really care about the environment like I, I really do i don't want to rip up sand all over the place by my base where i have to look at it and then it looks really really ugly but this spot over here that i never see i mean if i don't see it it never happened hey i found more glass no way that's amazing so with layer one done let's think about this so we have the sheep right there obviously uh on top of them we'll, we'll put lights so we'll do like a light source above every spot and then I think I can run rails like right on top of that. So that means like right in this area, the rails are running, which means right above here is where the next collection layer goes. Gotcha. There's so much room. Easy. We can fit this in here. No problem. That back wall is going to be really ugly though. Like <laughs> completely caught up. I should probably just fill that in, shouldn't I? No glass back there. Maybe just more deep slate walls. Yeah, that's probably a good call it's a two-story farm i need grass on the second story so touch pickaxe you are amazing i put the pickaxe away because this one is doing really really bad too definitely need mending soon but for now it's perfect an absolute must have grass please spread i'll even give you a light do your thing more babies baby party now the second layer even though it is the second layer is exactly the same as the first layer it's just a little bit higher up the setup the actual farm itself everything's identical so now that the first layer is in it's time for the second layer by the way the mechanics behind this farm are pretty simple the observer watches the block when it updates sends a redstone signal to the block below the redstone dust which sends a signal to the redstone dust which sends a signal to the dispenser dispenser with shears and it does all of the work shears the sheep wool gets thrown on the ground item collection system picks up the wool item collection is next i don't have a lot of iron it's kind of embarrassing the goal is to use as few hoppers as possible for the item collection system you'll need a couple different things you'll need a drop off chest and hoppers to put items inside of that chest you'll need rails both powered rails and normal rails you'll also need a way to power those powered rails and a hopper minecart now these aren't exact amounts right here these are just items they're placeholders i'm not too sure of the exact amounts yet we'll figure it out when we put it in item drop off takes place in the middle for sure no doubt about it i'm thinking that maybe we could do our chest right in here uh going going long ways because the building is odd shaped so that'll fit i think it needs to sit down there because the rails go go right there yeah 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 that's where it needs to sit this is a painful experience for me for sure it's a lot of iron <laughs> but it'll be worth it so the goal is to get all of the wool inside of this chest for the lower layer that's pretty simple we'll have a minecart line running back and forth below where the sheep are hopper right there it'll pick up all of the wool put it inside of the chest the upper layer is a little bit more tricky so we're gonna have a rail line running on this layer i'm thinking we start with a hopper in the middle 
Uh, then we go backwards, actually. So, if we were to go straight down, which we could do, the hoppers would drain all of the items into, into the minecart that's running back and forth, but I think that might clog the system up. So, instead of doing that, we need to come up with a better system. I think the better system is really straightforward. It's literally just move the items back one, uh, straight down with hoppers all the way down there, and then back over into this hopper right there. I think that works. I think it'll work. And then if we want to do, uh, which I might do, maybe like an extra hopper there, an extra one there, and then same on the, the lower layer, two and two, or one on the upper layer, two on the lower layer to speed up the item drop off. I think it'll work. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how that's going to work. Not 100% though. Okay, this is a lot of sheep right now. Let's start the process. I need like three sheep, maybe four. Uh, yeah, 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 that works. Children, come with me. Okay, four, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, wait, 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 wait too many. I have five, I guess five will work. Inside of every single pen here, we need one sheep. I think I need to get this in, uh, like all of the sheep on this layer before I do this rail line because it's going to be in the way. So one at a time, please, one at a time. You, go there. You, right in there, perfect. Sheep number three, go inside of stall number three. And number four, go. So that's perfect, four sheep over there just like that. You, come with me to the other side. That was so easy. And that's kind of where I have to stop. I have three sheep left over here. If I breed these one time, I get a new child, then I could breed the child with this one. And yeah, get more sheep. Honestly, the item pickup system is so simple. It consists of like two things, minecart line and minecart that goes back and forth. To make sure the hopper minecart can pick up all of the items, we run the rail line directly below the block that the sheep are standing on. The ends are the only different significant part. On either end, you're going to want to put a solid block and then a power source below that block and then three powered rails. I I think three should be enough to send the minecart back and forth, like three on either end. I think we're going to have to test it, but I'm pretty sure three should be good. To keep the rail line safe this time, in case I'm ever digging over here, I'm going to lay it on smooth stone. Definitely make sure you don't have any power sources next to your hoppers. If you have that, then the hoppers might be locked. But will it work? Minecart, go and, and please work. Make this really easy. Uh, okay. Uh, it's going to work. It's going to work. Hands down, it's going to work. The minecart is going forever. It's going to be able to pick up all of the wool once there's wool. It works. It works. That's the item collection system for the lower area. It's going to be a little different up there. But that's the lower area. It works flawlessly. And we didn't even need that much power. That's amazing. Okay. That's great. So I need two more sheep. Uh, to come with me, you come with me, and the child, yes, you too. Two last sheep for the lower layer, then we can figure out the next rail line. This time it starts different, instead of smooth stone, which does look nice, we're gonna go with dark oak wood, but instead of dark oak wood, which does look nice, we're gonna strip it. I think stripped dark oak wood is gonna look amazing. Now when it comes to light around the grass, which is something we definitely want to have, I'm thinking this time, maybe I put light sources back here. For now I could do like torches or something, I don't really have very many light blocks, I eventually turn those into lanterns and it looks amazing. On my last design, I had some trouble with the end farms being powered and not actually harvesting. I'm not too sure why. I'm gonna have to pay attention to the farm once it's up and running and see if it actually works. If it doesn't, it definitely has to do with this power source right here, and I'll have to move it. Also, it's kind of, uh, you know, out in the open from out here, so I'm thinking plant a tree in front of it, maybe even right off the bat to help it blend in, swap that over to cobble deep slate, and that too. That makes it look a little bit better, a little bit more intentional. That's good, but trees still. I hope this works. I really hope this works. I don't see why this farm would be powered at all. The power source is so far away. I think it'll work. Now that that's all figured out though, basically the same exact thing. Rail line moves back and forth. We have power sources on either end. I'm gonna need a solid block right there, not the wall. I don't think the wall is gonna work, so I'll come back and fix that. And yeah, rails everywhere in the middle to connect everything. Minecart on top, and it should go. Oh, it is a solid block. That's right, <laughs> that's right. I already changed it to a solid block. How could I forget that? Yeah, 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 that's a solid block. That's good. Okay, so. That's that. That's in. <gasps> I had so many extra rails the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. I wasted so much iron. Minecart is in. That's going to move back and forth forever. We'll make it look better in a second. But that's good. Now, the moment of truth. For now, white wool is fine. Let's put shears inside of all of these. Uh, is this going to work? The one that we really care about is that end farm right there. Is some kind of weird power situation going on, or is that going to work? Oh! <gasps> It works. It works. It works. This one got sheared. It works. That's fine. The other one that we have to test is that end up there and, and the other far end, but it works. It works. Look at that. The sheep is eating so much and getting sheared so many times. Eight wool already. Eight wool. This is insane. This, this is going to be perfect. It works. It just works. All that we need to do now is actually make the farm look a little bit better. Now to make that happen, uh, right off the bat, I'm, I'm thinking spruce wood. Maybe spruce wood in here kind of like 
like that, I was thinking to like hold the grass block. I think doing things like this uh, backwards might add a little bit of extra detail and maybe even if I wanted to add even more detail, put a log in there, strip it, and, and it matches, put buttons on there. That could look really, really cool. I'm not too sure. But yeah, maybe I come up with some sort of pattern ledge like that. Then we have a floor down here that's completely different. Up here, a little bit higher up, all the way. I'm thinking fences. Fences are going to look so cool. We'll be able to see the minecart moving back and forth continuously. And uh, extra bonus if there's ever a problem. Don't think there will be. But uh, if there is a problem, then we can see the minecart that is completely stopped and go in there and fix it. Maybe in the middle somewhere, like right there, cutting straight up. I work in a different beam. Uh, same thing on the other side. Then I could do something different in the middle if I wanted to. And you're probably wondering yourself right now, are they all going to be white sheep? No, 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 no. The plan is to have one sheep of every single color inside of this farm. Now that we know the farm actually works, at least the lower layer, I can go back in, take all the shears out, let the sheep regrow their wool, and then dye them. Dye. When it comes to dye, I think I have the ability to get almost all of the dyes over here. Not every single one. I know a couple that are missing for sure, but I should be able to get almost all of the colors in today. The ones that we can't get, we'll get in later. Off the top of my head, we don't have cocoa beans over here. I know where a jungle is, though, so we'll just have to go back. I don't think I have any cactus over here or sea pickles, so that means no green. But I definitely have seen, like, poppies in the forest, so I could go get red and make yellow and orange, and yeah. And yeah, I should be able to get pretty much every color, but not every one today. And we already have a stack of wool. <laughs> we already have a full stack of wool, like, ready to go. Oh, that is amazing. This thing is going to be so good. It's time to dye the sheep. It's time to finish up the build. So I've been working on this build for a long time. Big process, big process for sure. So second day of working on this project, this is what the outside looks like. It looks pretty similar. I, I hate, hate the, the torches. torches. I keep making really bad choices with my iron though, like wasting rails. So the lanterns, uh, or maybe even the candles, they're just gonna have to wait. We'll do them later. Torches for now, but please, please try and ignore them. A patrol came by at literally the worst possible time. I was on a dirt pillar working on the ceiling and the inside here it is i've been stumped for basically the whole project on what to do with this spot right here but then it just came to me like literally a second ago what if we just put another sheep face right there <laughs> it's a little different maybe a little out of place even but it's staring into our soul there's nothing we can do about it the floor so i pulled a little bit of an experiment here uh checkered floor i always love them they're great tough and smooth stone i feel like it blends together pretty nicely this is full warm 2.0, also known as a wool factory. If it's a factory, it needs to have a gray floor. I didn't want to do the whole build off camera though. We're doing the windows with black stained glass panes. I think black stained glass is gonna look really, really good from the top all the way to the bottom. And this reminds me that I really need Optifine. Absolutely, these are pretty tall windows. This is gonna take a lot of glass. So there is one gigantic problem with the build though. So I figured out this area. I think that looks pretty nice. I need to get up there and put some windows in up there. Uh, the ceiling, I detailed that. I put arches, fences, walls, you know, all of the details. But there's a gaping hole in the build and not only one gaping hole but actually two i have no clue at all i've been thinking for so long now i actually was completely stumped in those spots so i decided to go to bed keep thinking about it and maybe i'll wake up with the answer i didn't wake up with the answer oh yeah on the outside of the build i terraformed a little bit too i put coarse dirt oak leaves sweet berries did it on both sides of the path i think it looks pretty nice now we can actually have a road going over to the nether portal too on the inside the large amount of torches absolutely kills the vibe in here i really don't like the torches in here but like I said, there's nothing that I can do about it. We have to deal with it for now. I thought about putting a rug in here. I feel like a rug might not make sense though. So the sheep, oh, the sweet, sweet sheep. I haven't dyed any of them and the farm hasn't been running. Before we dye them though, should I do that? Like, do I do that on those big open sides? Just white wool in there, step it back a little bit, add a little bit of detail. It's my only idea that I have. The only thing that's stopping me from doing it is the large amount of white wool that we're gonna have there. Like, that's a huge amount. Like, if we're gonna go that route, we're gonna have to let this wool farm run. There's no way that I have enough white wool to do that whole thing. And also, is it too much white wool? Like, should I break it up with spruce fences? Let me know. It's dye time. So I'm pretty sure we should be able to make almost all of the dyes. We'll start with red, easy. Next is orange, which is a combination of yellow and red. Also, very easy. Red, orange, yellow, got it down. Next, we have a problem green like i said earlier i don't have any cactus no sea pickles either so no green we skip green and lime dye for now 
That puts us at blue. Blue is so easy. Lapis Lazuli. So there's the blue die. Here's the light blue die. And then cyan. Big problem. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure the only way to make cyan is with blue and green. I don't think there's anything that we could smelt up or anything like that to get cyan. So moving on to purple. Here is purple. This is kind of sweet. We're getting all of the candle recipes right now, which I actually completely forgot about. Like completely in 1.17, forgot about candles. Bee farm suit. Here's a magenta. I think this should be pink. Yeah. And we're in the home stretch now. Black is right there. That's gray. And that's light gray. To finish everything off, white dye right there. And I think that's every dye that we can make. So technically speaking, the order of the sheep does not matter at all. Once these sheep are actually getting sheared, we won't be able to see their color. But we're going to care about the color. We're going to start with red right there and then just go through the rainbow. Orange is next. After orange is yellow. Red, orange, yellow, green. So that would be lime right there. This would be green. We don't have those. Then cyan right there. Then blue and light blue. After blue and light blue, let's wrap all the way back over here and start the next row up here. Purple, magenta, pink, brown. I don't have brown. White, which, uh, awkward. I didn't even think about that. Light gray, gray, black. So we're missing brown and the green related colors. So green, lime, and cyan. Uh, that's not too bad. Out of 16, we're missing four. Now, I put item frames in front of all the sheep. I've decided what we're gonna do is let this farm run. We go behind the farm and put shears inside of every single sheep stall that is ready to go. The ones that aren't ready to go, they don't get any shears. So this one, we skip it. We skip the two over here. Shears inside of everything that can run. The farm starts running. Once we have an iron farm, definitely we will come back and put more shears inside of the dispensers. One is going to have to do for now. We let the farm run, and then once the sheep start getting harvested, like yellow right here, we grab yellow wool, come back, and put it in the item frame. So then we can still see the rainbow. If we do things this way, it's perfect. We can still see the rainbow. Rainbow wool blocks going down this whole thing. I think it's going to look so good, and it's a good way to mark what sheep is what. So this thing is running, clearly, I obviously here. This thing is working. This is going to be a good farm. Really good, actually. We let this thing run for a little while, keep funneling shears into this thing, and in no time, we have way more wool than we would ever need. All that's left is those awkward tall portions and an auto sorter on the back of this farm. Now, the auto sorter on the back of this farm is sort of a postponed project. To be clear, it's not something that I'm planning on doing like next episode or anything like that. We have some other big stuff planned. But eventually, I think an auto sorter hooked up to this farm would be amazing. Probably a must have. And then those walls. Today, I'm going to leave them blank. If you have an idea for them, what do you think about the wool? Maybe a stained glass window? Ooh, stained glass window, maybe? Let me know down below. That's going to do it for Minecraft Guide episode 148. I hope you liked it. Medical Boomstick, Swoopy Louvers, and Noodle Pork. Thank you all so much for the support. They said it would be impossible. Merely impossible to do. Full Warm 2.0 in one episode? No. No. It's possible. It's definitely possible. And we've done it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.